Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is the 11th lecture of this Graph Theory series part 1. And in this lecture we are going to study about the bridges. How we can find bridges in a given graph. So by definition, a bridge, uh, a bridge is an edge which when removed makes the graph disconnected or it increases the number of connected components. So if you see this graph, this graph is currently connected and the ones which are marked red are actually the bridges. If you remove any of the edge which is marked red, the result would look something like this. As you can see, the graph is now disconnected or the total number of connected components have increased. So an edge is a bridge if it increases the number of connected components when removed or it makes graph disconnected. So most of the editorials or most of the tutorials what they do they, they directly jump into the implementation or explanation of in and out time and how to find uh, the bridges but before we can move to finding the bridges there is an important concept that we must know. This important concept is not just going to help us uh, understand uh, finding bridges but also it is going to help us in understanding the algorithm to find articulation points as well and this is very important concept because using this concept i know there are problems on code forces rated 2400 and above which can be solved easily so now what is a dfs tree so when we make a dfs call for some root say this node what happens uh, we uh, in the dfs function what happens you look at the adjacency list of that node and whenever a node is not visited you make a recursive dfs call to that node and that node does the same thing looks at its adjacency list whenever a node is in the adjacency list of that node is not visited it makes a recursive dfs call to that and so on whenever you make a recursive dfs call an edge is traversed right and there is also a possibility then suppose you made a dfs call from here to here and then here and then here in the adjacency list of this node there are two nodes this and this but both of the nodes will be traversed or visited already so this edge won't be visited since this node is already visited so we would uh, track back so there are edges with uh, which would get traversed and there are edges which would not get traversed so these two edges are important and let's see what they are suppose we made a dfs call to this node uh, assuming this is the root of the graph uh, we are initially uh, rooting the given graph uh, to solve most of the graph problems it is important to root the given graph and find the dfs tree so we are assuming this is the root and we we are making dfs call to this node this node in turns uh, makes the recursive dfs call to this node this makes call to this node and so on now when you reach this node there are two edges or there are two nodes in the adjacency list of this node one is already uh, the first one is its parent directly parent and another one is not its parent but its ancestor which is not directly parent and also that is visited so this edge will not get traversed because we would not make a dfs call from this node to this node so this edge would not get traversed we will track back from here and then here and then here now since this part is traversed it would make another uh, recursive dfs call to this part it would have been this also but suppose it it was this so it uh, we made dfs call to this this would make dfs call to this now the same story for this there are two nodes but all of uh, both of them are already visited so this edge won't get traversed we will track back track back and now there is this edge we made uh, recursive calls to this node this edge won't get traversed again track back track back from here we made dfs call to these nodes track back and these nodes finally track back track back track back track back and back to main function so this if you see the black edges form a tree a tree which is actually uh yeah tree is always uh, always connected so this forms a tree now there are two kinds of edges one which are marked uh dark dark black and the ones which are marked gray the gray ones are the uh, edges which are not visited and these 
edges we would call uh, back edges in a graph there is notion of forward edge back edge and cross edge but while we are discussing dfs tree uh, we would not consider uh, cross edges we would only, see, uh, only consider two different edges forward edge and back edges now forward edges i'm defining those edges which gets traversed while making recursive dfs calls all these black no, uh, black edges the ones which didn't get uh, traversed while the uh, while making dfs call uh, we will uh, we will call those edges as back edges now you see each back edge if you put them back into the tree creates a cycle now uh, we have this DFS tree, an important observation regarding this DFS tree and uh, our bridges is that uh, first, first uh, there is an important observation about this, this back edge. A back edge connects a node to its ancestor. A back edge connects a node to its ancestor which is not its direct parent of course. So all you see this node, uh, this edge connects this descendant to its ancestor this descendant to its ancestor and so on every single back edge connects a descendant to its ancestor an ancestor which is not its direct parent right at least grandparent and above them another important observation about this these back edges regarding the uh, uh, bridges is that back edges can never be bridges so this is the claim that back edges can never be bridges stop the video or uh, oh, sorry pause the video and just think for a second try to prove it prove this fact why back edges can never be uh, bridges if you think uh, clearly or carefully you you know what is the definition of back edges here a back edge connects a node to its ancestor which is not its direct parent now when you connect a, a descendant to its ancestor what is happening here uh, there already exists a path from uh, that ancestor to this node right so even if you remove this back edge there still exists a path and hence this this node or this subtree won't get disconnected or in other terms you can understand that whenever there is a back edge it creates a cycle so if you remove that back edge again uh, it won't make the graph disconnected because from a cycle if you remove one edge the graph is still connected so each back edge creates a cycle even if you remove that back edge the graph is still connected and hence uh, back edges can never be uh, bridges to to show you uh, one of the implementation on the internet one of my favorite sites this is cp algorithm cp algorithm dot h if you look at the implementation uh one more thing this is implementation of uh, of uh, bridges and uh, this is not the final algorithm we'll write our own uh, our own algorithm it is just to show you that how we proceed to find bridges uh what we are doing this is current node and we are traversing each child in the adjacency list of current node v if it is its direct parent p is direct parent of current node if it is direct parent of course we are uh, continuing because this cannot be uh, the back edge now if the child is visited you see this is visited uh, to that is two node to uh, this is basically the child node uh, if this is visited then it cannot be oh sorry yeah if it is visited it cannot be a bridge right that is why we are not testing the bridge condition here but if it is not visited then it can be a bridge and that is what we are testing here for the bridge condition so if it is visited it cannot be a bridge that is why there is no condition to test whether the given edge is whether the current edge is bridge or not we are testing it in the uh, uh, in the forward edge which is not visited so you see whenever uh, there is a back edge which connects a node to its ancestor then we are not testing the bridge condition because we know that this edge can never be a bridge that is why we are not testing it there we are testing it when we are making a dfs call that is when we are actually traversing a forward edge
that is the only uh, the forward edges are only uh, candidates for the breaches so this was all for this lecture uh, uh, this was actually a part one of this finding bridges lecture so this was all for this lecture just think about this dfs tree and in the next lecture we are going to take an example and see how using a low and uh, low and in array we are going to see how we can calculate uh, or find out the bridges in a given graph so uh, till the next video drop just think about this dfs tree and what are the properties uh, different properties we can uh, we can see in the dfs tree so thank you guys for watching and yep till the next video drops keep coding thank you